What's up, Kansas City? I'm your host, Glenn Bryan Frizzell, coming to you today from the 18th and Vine District, the Lincoln Building on the second floor, new home of Cascade Media. Today's special guest is a certified personal trainer who has competed as a bodybuilder in several professional competitions. He has either won or placed in several contests and was the first African American to win the Mr. Missouri Bodybuilding Contest. Congratulations on that. Thank you. He is owner of the gym Mike's Main Event in Independence, Missouri. He has worked to train professional baseball players, football players, and bodybuilders. We are blessed and highly favored to have him on What's Up Kansas City here today. Mr. Mike Patton, why don't you say hello to our viewers and tell them a little bit about yourself. Kansas City, how you doing? I'm Mike Patton, owner of Mike's Made Event Personal Training Center. I'm also a pastor of United Missionary Baptist Church, located 2745 Campbell. And it's such an honor and a privilege to be here with such an auspicious type of group now uh, uh, bringing open the very points of what now fitness and health and the mind, body, and soul really is. So it's an honor and a privilege being here. Mr. Patton, there's a lot that we could talk about today. I'd like to talk a little bit about our New Year's resolutions. Every year about this time, we walk into a gym and we say that if we haven't been getting in shape during, regularly throughout the year, it's something that we're going to do in the new year. Mm -hmm. But too often, this goal falls kind of short. Mm -hmm. Mr. Patton, what can we do to really narrow down on some of the uh, health benefits that working out regularly would do and make this more than a New Year's resolution to stay healthy and fit in the New Year? Well, the New Year's resolution, first of all, must be a New Year's resolution that has been resolved. And there's a difference between a resolution and something that has been resolved. And what happens is that if it's not resolved, it becomes dissolved Sweet. over a period of time. And so now we look at resolutions as something I plan on, so you go through a point of contemplation. And you reach a point where I know I need to do this, but I don't know how. And so now you go to a gym, you speak to someone like myself that does this, and I've been doing this for 27 years, have my business for 21 years, that now has a preparatory plan. So now we go through a plan of state changing our behavior, recalculating our mindset, our eating habits, our sleeping, sleeping habits, the type of exercises that we should do. Because most people, 90% of the people that go into gym facilities today, they are oblivious as to how to operate those machines properly because they don't even know their own anatomy. And that's okay, that's why we need help. And so now to resolve this, we have to go down to a preparation. Getting with someone that has the knowledge, lives the life, and has now the execution of whatever I need. Not trying to base it upon looking like someone else, but being the best you can be with what God has given you. Then there's a point now of action. After I prepare myself, I go now into an action phase. Action means how many times do I go to the gym? What does this mean? What does this consist of? How many machines do I do? How much cardio do I do? What does my diet look at in either losing weight, which now most 90% of the people that come to the gym do, or what do I do to put on the weight? Now, I go through my plan of action. I go three times a week, four times a week, whatever my time now allows me to come. And then now I go to a point of maintenance. I get to that point where I go long enough. Now I reach my goal and I try to maintain it. And there's a point in the very middle called the relapse because everybody relapses. Nobody stays with a diet all the time. That's why I don't advocate diets. What I do is I advocate lifestyle changes because what we don't want to do is go back to contemplation. We can't do that because we already know what we should do. We need to go back to a point of preparation. So right now, the person needs to resolve in their mind that this is it, I'm tired, this is where the line is drawn, now I need to make a, a sufficient change in my life to add to my life and not take it away. Mr. Patton, I take this all in as motivation. Let's talk a little bit about the benefits of regular health, health uh, regimen, regular health care and exercise, a little tongue tied there. Uh, among the top leading causes of death for African Americans, we have heart disease, cancer, stroke, and diabetes. Can you tell us a little bit about would exercising regularly help prevent these issues from occurring? Well, exercising regularly allows the body now to build itself up, its testosterone levels, okay, its uh, hormonal levels. Now, it helps to also strengthen the heart, which we know the heart is the strongest muscle in the body. And so it reduces chronic heart failure. But see, along with the working out piece, we cannot forget the very important component, and that's the diet. Because I can't train in the gym and then go back home and put neck bones inside of college. That won't work. That won't work. And so African Americans, we fall victim as African Americans towards whites. And, and, and we are putting ourselves in a situation as females are concerned at a 93% to 94% health-related risk. 
in order to obtain any one of these types of health-related diseases, you know, before the age of 50. Now, what happens is this, is that because we have grown up in the depression and we've come from slavery, we maintain the slave mentality, and we think that these things are still applicable for the day, and they aren't, because times are changing. There's so much that they're putting in foods right now that you get from different types of, of, of food products and the FDA has tried its best maybe to counteract and to do what it's supposed to do, but it hasn't done that because we take good food and we take it home and we mess it up. Right now, no one should eat the gut of a pig called a chicken, okay? But we still have that type of mentality as though we're still back in the days of the Depression and they taste good. No, they don't. It's called <laughs> acquired learned behavior. You have to now pull yourself away from those things that are destructive, that are foreign and alien to the body. Because now we have to understand what a pig has in it. It takes in anything. Do you want anything into your, your, your body? That's something I don't want to learn. I don't eat pig. I eat a little bit of sausage, but bacon, chitlins, mm -hmm. never really was much into the pig. But, but a lot of people are. You look at people over 50, 60, oh, yeah. 70 years old. Yeah. They live by this. But see, it's not the point of, and you know, longevity has its place. But along with my longevity, I want quantity. Teach. Okay? Teach. Because I can be 80 years old and live like uh, I have no range of motion. I'm on medication. I'm medicinal. I belong to some type of healthcare facility or, or assisted living place. I want to be able to function on my own. But that is all contingent, of course, of God's grace, but me taking care of the vessel that He gave me. Well, Mr. Patton, okay, we have a quick call. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Patton, uh, you look like you work out more than two or three times. We know that you're a personal trainer. How often do you work out in the week? Well, I've bodybuilt for 20 years. Uh, I have seven titles. Um, I've competed nationally. And at the age of 52, I train just as hard as I did at 25. Now, there's certain things that I don't have to do because I'm not getting on stage. But there's certain things I choose to do because I choose to keep myself in shape. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. And two, if I want to teach somebody something, mm -hmm. disciple somebody, into something and out of a storm, I have to make sure that I'm fortified with an anchor mm -hmm. and I look the part that I say. Mm -hmm. So I like to practice what I preach. Mm -hmm. I never bring into the gym anything that now I'm telling them to stop that I can't do. And so I practice what I preach. And so training right now, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, a subliminal high for me, mm -hmm. you know, because I like to get down with 25 years old, they can't hang with me. It's a mental thing. Mm -hmm. It's a mental thing, but it's something that I know I don't want to die like my father and my mother did and my uncles and my grandmother and all these people dying from cancers and all these other different types of diseases because a lot of these things are genetic disposed and we're predisposed to a lot of these things through our genetic line, but they can be suppressed if we take care of our vessel. Thank you for sharing that with us. Let's make it personal. Say mm -hmm. I come to your gym and I want to quote unquote improve my healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. What regimen, what footsteps would you walk me through? Well, first of all, I would need to find out is your lifestyle healthy? So we would then open right. up the cupboard and we would see what's inside the cabinet. Now we would do what we call an FET, which is a fitness evaluation test. I would take your BMI, take your measurements, take and see what you've eaten for the last three years on an, on an everyday to normal basis. I would check your oxidative rate. Oxidative rate simply means the proteins, fats, and carbs that are put into my body. How fast, medium, and slow are these products being broken down? Is it being utilized as, as a fuel source of energy? Okay. And so by me finding that out gives me an idea of what your body now is more susceptible to what it needs. Some people need more proteins, they can digest it better. Some people need to have more carbohydrates because they have low energies. And sometimes it's the fact that sometimes people just need hormone replacement. And, and, and a lot of trainers don't talk about that because I don't think that they're educated on that level. The cortisol in the body facilitates proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. If you have low levels on so far as hormones can tone, for a man it can change the libido, it can mess up a marriage. Okay, for a woman it can do the same thing. You can have lows, you can have dips in your day, which you get fatigued, you can get sleepy, no matter how much you train, how much you eat. It seems like the strength levels just cannot stay at a normal level. Well, hormonal replacement also allows you to maintain that hormone that at, by the time 40 to 50 comes, will decrease, and that's in everybody. But in order to keep it up to a moderate level, exercise is one of the best things you can do.
So what I would do is I would do a profile on you. Then I would lay down and orchestrate the times that you're there. Say, for instance, that you want to just get a little more muscle and you look you know, like you're in pretty good condition right now. But I won't know that until you go up under the scheme and the outline that I have set. Because you're in shape, may be in your shape, but it may not be in my shape. Right, right. And by me being the professional, I want you to meet the standards that now I've set. Right, there's a challenge there. There's a challenge there. So what we want to do is meet a happy medium and take you to points and limits where now your body's challenged, your mind is challenged, the integrity of who you are as a person is challenged. We lay that on the line and we come up with a happy medium in order for you to get a victory in your results. Victory in our results. Let's talk about bodybuilding for a moment. Uh, Mr. Mike Patton has served as a trainer to many NPC, that's National Physique Committee, bodybuilding figure and fitness competitors who went on to be title champions. What is the process one goes through to be a bodybuilder? Say, uh, when I come into your gym, is there an acceptable amount of body fat? How do we build muscle? Um, well, I'm sorry. What, what, what happens is this, is that as I take that person's body fat count, now we place ourselves, okay, this person says they want to do physique bodybuilding, or this right. person wants to do figure fitness, or this person wants to compete as there's a There's different okay. areas. There's different areas. And so there's a category of body fat now that outlines where that person will compete. Like say, for instance, if you have a female bodybuilder, which now they call the physique category, you want the body fat down to about 65%. If they want to do... Um, figure competitions you want it between nine and nine point five percent if you have the fitness competition you want a little bit lower probably about eight percent and bikini is probably about ten to twelve percent and so you try to put that person in that category in which one category says you're a little bit harder the other one says you want a little bit more soft and feminine look there's a stance there's a presentation that goes along with that and so you look at that person's genetics and you see how their symmetry is balanced now over time, if a person hasn't done it, it takes about eight to nine months for you to really see what that person has. And you have to take them through the process now that their body now begins to conform to the way that you want them to look. Now my lens are different than the average person because I've been doing this for so long. And so I look at the outline of what symmetry and balance proportion is a lot different than somebody that has just seen somebody in the magazine. Because I've judged many contests, I NPC shows, um, MC shows. I've um, I've been to many Arnold's and Olympic Mr. Olympia contests, and so you have to kind of pin out if those persons can. I've had some people that I just have to say, look, you know, your genes just don't. They, they're not acquiesced to protocol. So there's a you know, science. You just can. Is there an acceptable age limit? Is there a too old category? Too young? Is it? They got a lot of these guys out right now that are coming out. They have over 60 categories, over 70 categories. I commend them for doing that. No, they cannot compete against those that are 25. No. But in their own category, I commend them for pushing the, the accelerator button, getting themselves, you know, in, in good condition at that age because a lot of people just kind of fade off into the wilderness by the time that they get to that age. And they say it is what it is, and they live life any way that they can. In the woods without anyone to help about. Mr. Patton, I'd like to ask you a little bit about the culture of bodybuilding here in Kansas City, Missouri. Who are some bodybuilders that you've worked with or are working with that are doing some things on the scene right now, other than yourself? Well, my, my first, uh, one of my first trainers um, was uh, Randy Cummings and John Johnson. And Randy Cummings and I were together for about maybe five or six years. And um, uh, I trained a young lady by the name of Lisa Lewis for six years. She went on to win the USA. And then um, she went on to pro bodybuilding. She placed fourth and fifth in Miss Olympia. Uh, she has, has a phenomenal physique. And we knew that when she was uh, first brought to my home to say, hey, can you take something with this body? In 1989, I think it was. And so um, Lisa just went off to do uh, terrific things. Um, I just trained another, um, Carlton Newsom, who just won the Mr. Missouri in the NPC in, in, the, in the male category, the overall. Uh, I won that in 93 and in uh, 99. Uh, Janie Brooks just won the Excelsior Springs and won the, the, the Novice and won the, the, uh, the Masters and took second in the Open. Uh, well, matter of fact, she took second in the Open, but she won all the categories that she was in. And um, I have a young lady uh, named Tashina Harrison that just is going to be phenomenal this year, a young lady um, um, uh, that's coming from Arkansas. Her name is Jennifer Wolf. Uh, and Phenomenal physique, 
one lady that we brought up, uh, Jennifer uh, Nelson uh, King, rather, that is from Columbia, and she drives up on the weekends. And so I got other up-and-coming guys that, you know, we work with, but uh, it's been so many, you know, uh, Bernard Wesley, some of the guys back in the old days, you know, that, that did a phenomenal job. So uh, I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of people in the industry. There isn't anybody right now, uh, Robert Whitman, you know, the guys that have their own place, but I don't work with them directly. But there's a lot of great um, competitors out there. Uh, I don't think competition is like it used to be. I don't think the soul and the love of the game is there. I think it's more mediaized. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's more propped up. I think it's more bougie than it used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to train down to the gutter, you know, sweat and blood and tears all over the windows. You know, wow. most of the days how we used to train. Wow. You know, and uh, we I earned titles. Imagine. They weren't just given to us. Yeah. You know, so that's where I stand on that. Let me mention this before we have to log off. Your website is mikesmaineventpc.com. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about growing up in Compton? What are the similarities, the differences between uh, living here in Kansas City, Missouri? There's no comparison. There's no. There's no comparison. See, at the time I grew up in the 60s on up, we, our parents, and most people there moved from the South because California is the biggest agricultural state there is in the Union. And there, it was a boom to buy property there because you can get it cheap, especially in the inner city areas because a lot of the uh, Caucasian residences began to move up into the San Fernando, you know, San Fernando Valley up in North Hollywood, my, my. where now, where, you know, the boom there just boomed. They made a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know, but in our hood, you know, you can get a house for thirteen five. but my daddy, by the time he retired in 83, sold ours for about uh, 110000 so there was a great profit. Mm -hmm. You know, so far as that's concerned, but wow. the amount of people you're looking at 18 million people estimated as a population in Los Angeles, there's about 38 million in the state of California, and so there is more diverse type of people now because of the weather situation. Now you have more people that are out doing things, getting in shape because you have the opportunity to do more things outside and not be closed in because it's cold, mm -hmm. you know, swimming and all these other different types of things, bike clubs, etc., running clubs are more prevalent there than they would be here in the Midwest where it's cold. The people, the mindset there is different. You know, there is a scratch. The economy is totally different than it is. The taxes are much greater than it is here. But the opportunity is a little bit greater because that's kind of like a hub for all the stars and the people that come from different countries. You see people, like I was sitting down having lunch one day and Jean-Claude Van Damme came and asked me for help. Amazing. You know, in his uh, getting ready for his next movie because he had hurt his arm. What should he do to rehab it? Guys, the deceased Gregory Hines, and he and I used to talk three to times when I would come down to California. Uh, and uh, he and I would talk about his movements and dancing and everything. Just a tremendous guy. And so I've seen a lot of people in my tenure. And uh, Magic Johnson, whoever you see, I've, you know, that's out there, I've had the uh, auspicious, uh, grateful opportunity to meet and work with them and said some positive things to them to help them along the way. You know, so that's 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 been something that's very special to me. And this is also a spiritual journey. I would be negligent if I did not mention that you're also a licensed minister. Can you tell our viewers how you've taken Christ with you in your bodybuilding, whether it's owning a gym, challenges, adversities, everything that you had to overcome? Well, I've taken it by the way of maturity. And I'm not just a licensed minister. I'm also a pastor of a church. Mm -hmm. So I am ordained. I'm a pastor of United Missionary Baptist Church located here in Kansas City, Missouri. And the calling on my life is what my life is right now. That stage does not have its presence to where God has me now because God wanted me to decrease while he increased. And so he made it possible for me now to take down the egoism of this and now set myself aside where he set himself forward. Amen. And so my direction, my love, my compassion, my understanding of my purpose in my life has changed. It's not just the physical part, but one thing I do know, if you don't change the heart, you can't change the outside. Because if you don't change the inside, the outside will remain the same. Well, Mr. Panda, do you have any final words for our viewers? There's a lot that I wanted to ask you here. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to, mm -hmm. to cover everything. Would you like to have the final words here? I just want to leave you with these four Ds that I think that you might want to embrace and join and engage. If you want to make a change in your life, always remember to keep God first. Remember, you must maintain desire. There must be discipline, dedication, and determination applied. For you can do all things through Christ, 
that strengthens you. I'm Mike Patton, and I will see you at Mike's main event. Mr. Patton, we would like for you to come back and talk to us. We'd like to keep abreast of what's going on in the bodybuilding world locally here in Kansas City, Missouri. Mm -hmm. um, come back anytime you have anything yes, to share with us. I would love to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Patton. I appreciate it. I'm Glenn Bryan Frizzell with Cascade Media Group. Go online, check us out. More video, www.whatsupkansascity.net. And remember, the sky's the limit. Aim high. If you shoot for the moon and you miss, at the very least, you would have landed among the stars. Till next time, take care. What's up, Kansas City? I'm Brianna Garlington. I'm Charles Williams. And I'm Derek Parker. And we are CMG. CMG. And we would like to welcome you to follow both websites. That's whatsupkansascity.net and cascadesports.tv. Some of our programs consist of Are You Awoke, Coach's Corner, and many more interviews, news, and blogs. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Instagram at Cascade Media Group and Twitter at What's Up KC and Cascade Sports. And remember, the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. And when you invest in your community, you are really just investing in yourself. So don't just like it, share it.